Moscow claims to have booted the Ukrainian Marines out of Krynki months ago. But in reality, have the Ukrainians not only held on to their, their ground, but expanded their bridgehead across the Dnipro? I'm Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran. We're going to talk about that. Plus, has Russia crossed a critical threshold in the east? Let's get into it. Okay, this is going to us from the Kiev Post, which admittedly is a Ukrainian source, so take it with a grain of salt, but they are reporting that Russian mill bloggers are irate, uh, which is a great way to put it, at the Kremlin, uh, primarily because the Kremlin uh, reported very publicly on February 21st, uh, Defense Minister Shoge, Sergei Shoigu uh, telling Putin that Moscow's forces had pushed the Ukrainian Marines out of Krenki. This is, for those of you keeping track at home, this is a small bridgehead held by Ukrainian Marines uh, right here outside of uh, the Dnipro, outside of Kherson. And as you can see here, right, a small portion of the town is in fact controlled, but it's listed as contested. It's at least not occupied by Russian forces. And the fact that Russia cannot retain this very small uh, region, this very small part of the uh, front, especially when it's on the far side of a river, is frankly a little embarrassing for the Russian armed forces. And the uh, so it makes sense, of course, that the Russian MOD would believe that they actually hold Krinky. The problem is that uh, as much as you Russian commanders may want to believe that they have booted the Ukrainians out of this problematic fishing village, um, it hasn't actually happened, right? That's sort of the problem with a lot of wars now, uh, is that as much as commanders want something to be true, as much as they can massage the metrics and change the reporting requirements to make them true, um, you still have to run up against reality. And it's sort of like the U.S. and the Afghan army, where, man, every year they were like, the Afghan army's so close to ready, guys. They're strong and capable and green on every slide deck, except for the part where they actually had to go out and fight the war, things didn't go so hot. Uh, so anyway, you've got the Ukrainian Marines in Krinky. Um, but here's the problem is that Russian mill bloggers who are generally a better source for this than the staged managed propaganda that comes out of the Kremlin, uh, Russian mill bloggers are saying that uh, actually Ukrainian Marines uh, have crossed the river at a second location trying to dig in there as well. And this is coming from multiple pro-Russian sources, so fairly credible. The, reportedly, it's happening near the Antonovsky Bridge, right? this region right here, which again, we've had reported for some time. As you can see, it's listed as Ukrainian controlled. Um, but it's pretty problematic for Russia, given the fact that if this gets out, um, it's going to expose just how deluded uh, the planners in the Kremlin are and how disconnected from reality they are. Um, right? According to one pro-Kremlin mill blogger, he said, the unfortunately, that's Ukraine, that, ex that Ukrainian expansion of the Dnipro bridgehead, that's the reality. In spite of that, Teplinsky, uh, the general, told Putin that Krinky was captured by Russian forces long ago, and now they've been mopping up the place and pretending Ukrainian forces were destroyed for the last two weeks. This is from a VDV mill blogger. Uh, of course, uh, the ISW outed them some time ago, saying, quote, the Kremlin likely prematurely claimed the Russian seizure of Krinky to reinforce its desired informational effects. That is to say, they wished it were true ahead of the March 2024 presidential election, uh, although the Kremlin is likely setting expectations that the Russian military may fail to meet. Well, there's one thing we know. It's that if your military is big enough um, and disconnected from reality enough that you could say anything you want and pretend it's true as long as it never actually gets, you know, confronted with reality. But the only way that would happen is, of course, if you saw like a Ukrainian Marine breakthrough here. Um, then Russia would have a hard time ignoring the fact they never actually took care of those Ukrainian Marines. Um, now, there's also talk, right, that a lot of uh, Ukrainian Marines are also pushing towards uh, Kozachi Lahari. Um, and according to one mill blogger, uh, 
that the Ukrainians have reinforced their drone units. Uh, this, the, he said, quote, the sky is just buzzing with them from recon drones to strike drones. And this is what we've talked about before. This is sort of how Ukraine has been doing this. Um, it's been relying on ferries and boats to move uh, supplies and soldiers across the bridgehead, which means not really any armored vehicles. But the uh, and that's because Russia will destroy any fixed infrastructure that's built here. So it sort of has to be fluid. Uh, but the Ukrainians are developing their logistics on the north side and improving their defenses on the south. And so for Russia, unfortunately, it means that they need to continually keep units deployed to this location, pulled off of other locations on the front line, lest the Ukrainian Marines push all the way through. For a long time, uh, this Kherson reason was pretty sparsely uh, occupied, sparsely garrisoned, and it freed up a lot of Russian maneuver units to fight at first in the Zaporizhia uh, counteroffensive, and then later in Avdivka. So the fact is that these Ukrainian Marines, even though they're small in number, they're forcing a disproportionate number of Russian forces to relocate themselves and hold these regions. Even if all they do is contain the Ukrainian Marines, if you're looking at, let's say, 300 Ukrainian Marines and another 1,000, let's say, logistics support troops on the north side. Let's say you say you're talking about 1,300 people. Well, it looks like they've occupied several uh, several regiments worth of Russian troops, um, almost a dozen different regiments. And that's pretty impressive, right? Because if they're sitting here, then the most important thing is that they're not supporting uh, Russian efforts elsewhere. So functionally, they've been taken off the battlefield uh, just with the work of a couple dozen Marines. So guys, if you need to be more effective on the battlefield of life, uh, you're going to want to check out Strike Gum, right? I designed this as an energy drink alternative. When I was in Afghanistan, I pounded energy drinks all the time, but they were loaded with sugar. They had, they were just inconvenient. And if you've ever drank a, a, a can of Rip It in 135 degree desert heat, it's disgusting. It's awful. Imagine warm Red Bull. Anyway, Strike Gum's a better alternative in basically every way. This pack contains five energy drinks worth of caffeine, right? Uh, and zero sugar. So if you're interested, check it out at strikegum.com. Uh, we've got first-time customer discounts, military and veteran discounts. Check it out. And we are hopefully going to be on sale in, on Amazon pretty soon. So, um, We'll all let you know. Also, one other thing that I think is important to know, this is actually important. I am not on Telegram, guys. If you see something in the comment section that purports to be me, it is not, right? They are scammers at best. They may actually be like Russian trolls trying to like, I don't know, like damage my reputation. They may be trying to run a finance scam. I'm not on Telegram. If it is not linked in the description of my video, it's not official. I have an official Facebook. I have this channel. I have a TikTok. I have the Discord. That's basically it. That's basically it. I'm not even active on Instagram anymore. Got it off my phone. It was taking up too much of my time. So the point is, I'm not on Telegram and or, or WhatsApp, and I, I the only place I, I chat with fans, and that's pretty infrequently, is on uh, the Discord. And even there, it's, it's pretty obvious, and I'm basically there to game. So anyway, I just wanted to put that out there because it's been a, an ongoing issue. Okay. One other thing that I wanted to talk about that's also important is that Russian forces may have crossed a critical, uh, juncture around Tonenke. Now, you, now we've talked in previous videos about the fact that, uh, Ukraine seems to be using this river here from Berdichi, Semenev to Tonenke and Orlivka as kind of a defensive line. And you could see that crossing a water obstacle, like we talked about for the Ukrainian Marines is a tough mission. And it really is difficult to sustain operations on the far side of any water obstacle. So I think Ukraine is relying on this canal and, and lake system in order to deter uh, the Russians from being able to push past it. The problem is that it looks like Russia has done a pretty good assessment of their battlefield because you can see here in uh, Tonenke where they've pushed into the town and then crossed at this juncture here. They've seized this bridgehead and this is really critical that they not seize it because this is the only bridge, as far as I can tell, across this water obstacle. So 
if they're over on this side, you can see Ukraine can still contain them south of Umansky, but there's a big open field here where the Ukrainians are going to have a tough time stopping a Russian advance. And while the Russians aren't really on their route to anything big and significant, the most worrisome part here is, again, that they've crossed this critical obstacle at one of the only remaining bridgeheads. So I'm surprised it wasn't destroyed already, frankly, um, but it's it may end up not being that significant, but it could end up being very significant. And again, these Ukrainian forces in Tonenke, also bad news because this cuts off the only route in and out of the, the town. So it's this is actually probably a pretty substantial problem for Ukrainian forces on the defensive. Anyway, guys, that's all I had. Please hit like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, it ensures that the YouTube algorithm knows that this content is good. It's legitimate. Um, I know it's an election year and YouTube is cracking down on just about any kind of opinionated content on YouTube. That's all I had. Thanks so much. See ya.